What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark and this is 360 Finance. In today's video, we're going to be talking about why the CFA level one passing rate was historically low for the May 2021 candidates. If you've been following this channel, you'll know that I wrote uh, level two in at the end of May and I get my results this week. So I'll definitely do a follow up video this week once I get my results to see if these level one rates have spilled over into level two as well. So that'd be very interesting to see, to compare and contrast that. Anyways, I wanted to make this video just to kind of give them my spin or my thoughts, my speculative ideas on why the passing rate might've been so low. Obviously last year was a very unique year uh, with a lot of people staying at home in the COVID 2020 year. And uh, you know, many CFA exams getting deferred to this year. I think a lot of people online are kind of upset with the level of detail that the Institute has provided as to why these rates are so low. and. I mean, I tend to agree with them. You you would like a little bit more detail, but the, the Institute has never been super detailed in releasing, you know, their minimum passing score or the criteria to determine it either. So the first thing that I want to start with actually is, is just the historical rates. And so the CFA level one or level two, one, two and three exam have been basically being written since the 1960s and 25% for level one is the lowest it's ever been in history. And you can see here the 10 year average, it, it has a, you know, a passing rate of approximately 42%. If you actually go back to, you know, the data from the 60s, um, you know, there's not a lot of candidates writing back then. So it kind of makes sense for the CFA to have higher passing rates back then. But, you know, as as the years went on, and, and, and more candidates started to become interested in this exam kind of peaking in, in 2018, there 2018, 2019, near 80,000 candidates for level one, you can see here that, that the passing rate just slowly declines over time as more candidates become interested in the exam, which I think is an important factor to consider. The thing is, the number of people that actually wrote level one in May 2021 was only approximately 26,000, which is well below its peak from 2018, 2019. So interest in this exam has actually dropped off significantly. And we ended up getting one of the lowest passing rates of all time, actually the lowest passing rate of all time, 25%. You can see just scrolling through this data, the lowest it's ever been was 34% in 2005. And I, th I think, sorry, I'm just quickly zooming through these da these data points. I mean, 32% for level two in 20 2004. But uh, you know, 25% is the lowest it's ever been. And you know, all the all the Institute really essentially did was come online and say that they believe the start stop nature of the studying has affected the pass rate, which you know, I completely agree with. And I, I've seen a lot of these other videos online kind of disagreeing with that. But I think people are kind of more upset that there's just not more clarity on the topic. In reality, my personal opinion is just that the, the Institute has no other explanation for why the the pass rate is so low, like they said, uh, this level of difficulty on this exam is approximately the same that has been in prior years. Yes, there has been that switch to computer based testing, but the you know, the actual content of the exam hasn't changed. On one end, I tend to pretty much agree with them that the start stop nature has certainly affected uh, the pass rates for this exam. But I think a lot of people are left wanting more detail than that. And I mean, there's kind of two things here, either one, the Institute has more information, and they're just not releasing it. Or two, they literally don't know either why the pass rate was so low because this exam was no different than any of the others besides the switch from you know paper to computer based testing. Some of the other videos I've watched on this topic, uh, the Mark Meldrum video, the straight talks video with AJ, they kind of disagree with this point here. But I mean, you can't really defend this low pass rate, right? Like this is clearly either an anomaly in the data and just a lot of the candidates just were not prepared for this level. But there was a level one in February 2021 as well. And it didn't have you know, historically low pass rates like it did in May 2021. If you're interested on what the minimum passing score kind of looks like, you can, you can scroll through uh, this 300 hours post here where they kind of estimate that the minimum passing score for level one ha has steadily been increasing since 2018, I guess, from 58 and a half percent all the way up to 72 percent in May 2021. And you can see also just for level two, I mean, 65 percent is estimated for December 2020 and 56 percent for December 2020 for level three. Now, these are all estimated figures, but if the Institute is essentially going to a higher minimum passing score, they would have had to state that in their explanation nation when people were asking, uh, you know, why the pass rate is, is historically low. And they didn't say that they didn't say that there has been any massive switch in from the minimum passing score that has the, from where it has been in prior years. So a lot of people are kind of just left not sure what to believe. And, you know, my personal opinion is just that, 
you know, I completely agree actually with the Institute, which is probably a little bit different from what you see on the other channels, at least in my circle of friends, when I was talking with my friends who had level one and level two deferred, I mean, they weren't sure whether they should be studying hard now, or should they just wait until their exam is confirmed, because they just didn't want to get deferred again, and, and you know, put in that six months or, or three months or however many hours in a short period of time to study for this exam, if, if it was going to get deferred again. And I think for that reason, a lot of candidates came in underprepared. At least that's my position personally. So I kind of agree with the CFAI, which, uh, you know, probably a lot of people uh, won't like, but it's just, I bet you they just don't have any other details to release. You know, I'm sure the minimum passing score was relatively similar to where it's been, uh, where they believe it should be. And then they just got a historically low pass rate. The fact that it's as low as it's ever been in, in the entire history of the existence of the CFA is kind of interesting or maybe even concerning a bit that, you know, as this this exam has garnered more interest throughout the years and kind of peaking in 2018, 2019 with, you know, near 80,000 candidates writing level one, you know, maybe they want less people to go through. And Mark Meldrum talked about this on his channel, how universities always have that one kind of like gate gatekeeper course, which which kind of fails a lot of people and kind of weeds out the week for for the latter years of university and you know that's certainly possible but uh you, you know i don't know the institute didn't really release details on that maybe there, there's inner talks about that but i just personally think that it's a little bit of an anomaly in the data i think that a lot of candidates came in unprepared again due to the start stop nature of the studying so i completely agree yeah i don't know it's it's kind of hard to say because uh, I don't think the Institute is in the business of tracking every single candidate's behavior or study patterns or anything like that. So they probably just don't have any other data to release. Anyways, that's kind of my, my thoughts. And, you know, I, I assume that this pass rate is unique to level one as well, because if you're ever going to get underprepared candidates, it's usually going to be for level one. Um, you know, people who don't understand the magnitude of, of the, the voluminous nature of the content you need to to prepare for for these exams. Once you get to level two and three, usually the candidates understand that maybe come in a little bit more prepared. But I mean, just in, you know, in my circle of friends, certainly there was people that were delaying their studying because they didn't know if, if the exams were going to get deferred again. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that that statement that the CFA made on, on Reddit there is, is completely accurate. It's just, uh, you know, I, I'm sure there's lots of people online have more questions, which probably won't get answered to be honest i get my level two results august 3rd so i'll certainly make a follow-up video that day maybe even i'll go live or something we'll see but uh yeah i uh i'm excited to see what what uh level two has in store and if it has historically low pass rates just like cfa level one did i doubt they will but uh you know we'll see maybe it'll be below the 10-year average or below the average since inception uh, but I don't expect it to be as low as 25%. So that's my official prediction. We'll see, obviously, come August 3rd. I'll make a follow-up video. Uh, but hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.